brother. It was my brother and cousin are two uh, years younger than me, so uh, yes, yes. I was like the guy who was like, You've picked seen the more movie. The I, I taught them how to, yeah, like I taught them like what ejaculating was. <laughs> like totally. I, like I, they asked me what what it feels like, and they and then they like watched the porn and jerked off together. Aww. <laughs> That's sweet. They like came for the first time together. <laughs> no. My brother and my cousin. Yeah, that happens. What? Yeah. I guess. Wow. Anyway, I'd like to take you to Pennsylvania in 1996. <laughs> okay. We've got the best interest in the game. <laughs> I'd like to take you We've to got a, a serious time. topic tonight. I'd like to take you to America. This gripped sounds by safe. It. Let's go. Where <laughs> where is it? Yeah. I couldn't think of a I couldn't think of a uh, song to pick. But, um, hmm. Do you want me to dig something up? No. Too late. <laughs> but, um, okay. sorry, you are not the older cousin in this situation. We do not <laughs> care. We're joined by Abby Rosenquist tonight of, um, of, uh, the Book Sluts podcast. Yeah. Woo. So, Abby's got a new show. Abby's back on the show, which I think is a, a good idea for a podcast because, uh, p- because you always tell yourself, I'm, you know, you want to read more. Yeah. You're like I should I should get an audiobook. But the problem with audiobooks is like you lose your spot. I can't my mind totally. is constantly wandering. Yeah. When you fall asleep so, mm-hmm. reading a book, you fall asleep on that page. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this guy's been talking to you for three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. was I? Yeah, and then you're like remember certain parts mm-hmm. that yeah, that's fuck that's a yeah. pain in the ass. Did you ever read the Red Wall series when you were a kid? No. Mm-hmm. It's like it's, so it's a series. It, it, it was pretty cool. It's like a medieval, like medieval sort of Lord of the Rings type story. Are you super into medieval shit? Uh, <laughs> I could, I have thing? the potential to be. Okay. If I, you, if you, I, I have the potential. I can get it really into anything. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. just kind of like wherever my brain's mm-hmm. gonna. Sure, gonna sure, go, sure. Right. So it's power tools this month. But you tripped and you're just running forward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I got real into Lord of the Rings when I was like in high school. I okay. thought that was you know, but. Um, so the Red Wall series is like, it's like, it's like a medieval setting, but the characters are like badgers and mice and foxes Fun. and, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. um, but p- people say it's racist because all the bad of animals are like, of course, <laughs> every animal represents a specific race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. And tell right, us which right. ones they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. There's a chihuahua. Okay. Well, f- <laughs> there's a panda bear <laughs> and there's a, we uh, all know what these are. Yep. All obvious. <laughs> No, but all the, but the, yeah, certain species of animals are good and certain species are sure, bad. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, just like race. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, we're not going to say which ones are good and which ones are bad. That's up to the Yeah, viewer. we don't play any favorites on the sit down. <laughs> Before we start this episode, I do, I had a cheesy gordita crunch last night. Which I sort of wrote that off at the, on the Taco Bell Ooh, menu for a while. Why? Because I thought it was too heavy, I guess. I th- okay. But when it was out and like when it first came out, I was like, ah, oh, this is kind of an overrated menu item. Do you so get, it tasted good. But it's not. Do you get different amounts of sick from different things that you eat there? Or is it just for sure, no matter what, you're going to feel like shit? Yeah. That is was that, my is that, honestly, question. I don't is how feel, do you feel like now? shit after a Taco Bell. You don't. There's a lot of, fa- there's a lot of fast food that's, that's bad and... Um, yeah, it leaves me feeling awful, but Taco Bell is like pretty, pretty good. They say it's the healthiest fast food. No, they do not. Do they really? <laughs> yeah. I Who's can't they? tell if, yeah, who is they? There was an article that came out. It was <laughs> like Taco Bell's healthiest Because I am ready to believe food. it. But think and about I'm it. really hoping. <laughs> but it's not, it New doesn't mean you. article. <laughs> Taco Bell might give you diarrhea, but you, you never come Which away might from be, it. Is that healthy sometimes? Diarrhea? Yeah. It's you gotta be. Some, right? Slimming. Every once in a while. Like a lot of diarrhea is bad. Yeah. But mm-hmm. every once in a while, you just sort of like, oh, I got mm-hmm. some something out of me. You know what I mean? It feels right. like you just got out of a bad relationship. <laughs> I like I like the quick, yeah, the quick flash diarrhea. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. Where you're like, oh, I didn't expect to have diarrhea today. <laughs> <laughs> and now I have it. <laughs> and now Am it's I like, I don't have it anymore. Am I missing or shitting right now? <laughs> right. I have no idea. Wow. I'm just glad yeah. I'm home right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, do you, are you weird about shitting in public? Oh, of course. Are you weird about shitting in public? I used to be and I'm not anymore. Do you think that <laughs> guys... Like I, will shit, I will shit anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Do you... But I was really weird about it. When I was in fifth grade, I had to shit and I called my grandma, I called my mom to come pick me up. I, I said I was sick and they were like, why don't you lie down for a little bit? <laughs> and just lying down like, made it so much worse. And they were like, well, your mom's not home because she was probably taking my retarded brother to you know therapy or sure. whatever 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 shit he made up to get more attention you know and um, 
And then I called my grandmother and she like drove down like a residential street. Like I think I, I looked at her speedometer. It was like 60 miles an hour down like a residential road. So I could take a dump. Damn. And then I just chill. I just hung out because I felt fine after I pooped. And I'm like, it's noon. I'm just going to hang out. Have you, how many times have you shit yourself in your life? Do you think? Once. How about you? Twice. Twice. Okay. I can think of once but i'm sure it's probably like three times but i mm. it was like at the end of a long road trip we drove from san antonio to colorado that's where my grandparents were okay and so we'd been in the car for that's yes. long Six, that it's like 16, 16 I, yeah. i'm guessing 16 i've done a lot of long road trips and i forget how long each one is mm -hmm. but something like that and we were like less than an hour away and hi I deborah hey oh i'm just talking well, do not direct that sadness <laughs> well, at me. Here, it's you got to direct it right. That was perfect. Well, that worked out. There we go. I always got so disappointed. I'm so glad that the, I'm, this was perfect timing. He poured that for you. He was like, I'm getting yeah, this out yeah, for yeah. Deb. I was just tasting it to make sure nobody, <laughs> uh, no one at the bodega messed with it. He did try to premise this beer purchase with like, I know it's your favorite, so I got it for you. Aww. And I was like. I know it's your favorite, so I want to make you watch me drink the last one. Exactly. The only one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. I'll well, Deborah, we're, we're talking about America's opioid crisis. Yeah. Well, we have a dogfish head crisis. <laughs> wow, that's <laughs> insensitive, Deb. Yeah. Jeez Louise, come I'm on. I'm very sorry to all those who lost. <laughs> those, those she's who lost laughing. A Chad. She's not sorry. <laughs> she's whispering no, she's to me right now how much she hates everybody who's died from the opioid crisis. Those that lost a crystal. Do, I can't believe you're saying that right now, Deb. That's insane. Yeah. It's not that Deb's not a deep thinker like she is, but she just doesn't think deeply about the same stuff that I think about. Oh, yeah? I'm slow. I'll am i be like, what do you think about the opioid crisis? And she'll be like, well, I don't know. <laughs> don't do the pills then. <laughs> what does she think about medieval stuff? Oh, I don't. I feel like she couldn't care less. Oh. She's a big fan. Yeah, she we, wasn't like... You uh, had that birthday at medieval times. Did you go to that too? Yeah, I was there. <gasps> did we drive together? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. Nice. Happy birthday again. Yeah, nice. <laughs> there you go, Mike. Yeah, that was fun. But you know, medieval times now, it's not, they don't have the king anymore. They <laughs> replaced it with a matriarchal system. Oh, it's a queen now? <laughs> yeah. That's right, bitches bow yeah. down. No, but I just like that there's a fat, there's a, like the, some king somewhere who's like, this is, <laughs> me thinks this is bullshit. <laughs> it's just some out of work he's actor. Just, <laughs> he's just reading Jordan Peterson right now. Like, <laughs> he's like, yes. <laughs> exactly. I was too insecure when I was there. I don't actually do. You, did you look into a bunch of Jordan Peterson stuff? Are you a Jordan Peterson guy? Um, I kind of dabble in. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You like him, right? No. You don't like him? No, I don't. Think what, so. At all? What's What's your deal with him? I don't know. What What? Yeah. Why don't you like him? I mean, I don't think I know enough about him, but you know, all the f just because he's smarmy. Um, I don't think it's smarmy. I think he's just, he he kind of like has this like, uh, autistic guy's, uh, ignorance of, uh, <laughs> historical context and history sure, and sure, stuff sure. like that. And, and Sam Harris is very like, is Dude, very I was like that about too. to say, so and he's, I know more I about dabble in both of them as well. And I watched yeah. the, their debate in Vancouver or whatever. And it's like, yeah, it's just, and here's the thing. It feels I, like two like suburban dads who yeah. are. Yeah, <laughs> that are in like a room that don't filled get with it. each other. Whose kids don't talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, and because yeah. like literally, <laughs> it's two people going back and forth saying points mm -hmm. that like, I guess they're saying it in a way that is you know better it versus other people like but then it's like literally it's it's like what the left does like they make fun of the left but like they're kind of doing that mm -hmm. a little bit where it's like you say something that most people agree with and then they clap like literally they say just an obvious thing and then mm -hmm. the whole room of other suburban dads clap i don't actually i don't know what the rooms look like right. they're probably young dudes but a lot of white people but here's the thing i enjoy i enjoy some of their stuff for both of them but um it is hard not to laugh at yeah everybody at says stuff that makes sense right sure you just have to take that's the thing <laughs> you gotta, clock is right. exactly. you gotta a take day, a little you know? bit from here a little yeah. bit from there a little bit from there we yeah have i told this i'm sure i've told this story before but when i worked at god junk we would when we would get bored because we'd be in the truck a lot we would call the kkk and just listen to their like voicemail yeah. And so and we would just usually we would just laugh at it. Of course. But then one day the guy went on this like long rant about a particular 
you know, nation. The guy on the voicemail? Yeah. Th- so so each go, day they record a new racist well, every rant? Week they would <laughs> say oh, that's something. beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> like, what? And then they I wonder how he, much that guy gets paid. Probably, <laughs> and he probably turns out more new material than I do. Yeah. <laughs> He's not doing the same. Dude, somebody has their favorite the three yeah. years. KKK voicemail person. Huh? They have, they, I wonder if that's like a whole group of people is racist. The KKK, they mm. yeah, just people who leave those those voicemails every week. So it's like inspirational though. <laughs> it's like to whip well, up like their base. Good, thank you for calling the loyal white knight to the Ku Klux <laughs> Klan. And then one, the, it was it was during the Trayvon Martin case, and the guy the guy goes, uh, and just so you know, George Zimmerman is a Jew and a Mexican. He ain't got a drop of <laughs> white blood in him. <laughs> like, I, was like, I didn't even hear that. I didn't hear that take. I didn't hear fuck George. Because even Anthony Cooney was like defending George Zimmerman. And then yeah. they're like, this fucking guy's not even white. I love when hate turns towards hate. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, aw. Yeah, but they're like, this Look guy's not even white. Other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Okay, so um, this opioid. Then, cri- what? Well, no, I just want to get into Sam Harris for a second oh, because, yeah, like, totally. I try to give people, but like, he had some kid on the show. This, this, this like black kid. Yes. Did you hear? Did you I listen did. to that episode? Yeah, because you've shared some of his stuff before. I have. Yeah. It's and, so funny. Um, it's such a like. I feel like so many people hate him. I feel like people that I meet that do like him somewhat, even somewhat, mm-hmm. are like. Do you tell people that you like him? You know, mm. like no, nobody wants to <laughs> admit it. But I'm like, yeah, I like some of his stuff. I think that he could. I, I think, yeah, he has something similar to Jordan Peterson where well, he's like, well, here are facts and facts mm-hmm. shouldn't be offensive. And it's like totally. But also the way you approach things is like, I don't know. Yeah, he, but he's very... trying, though. I honestly. But here's the thing. I think that Sam is and I think he probably is a good dude who is trying. But um, I don't really. Yeah, see, I don't know if I think that because he had on he had Charles Murray on his show who wrote the Bell Curve. I'm still figuring out how I feel like, about it, but um, yeah, but he was like, "What?" Well, Charles Mer- Charles Murray wrote the Bell Curve, which is about like you know race and IQ, and the whole po- the whole kind of the thesis of the book is that different races have different IQs, but then when you actually look at IQ studies, it's like. Yeah, people but score do, differently okay, on those but tests that kind of stuff happens in com- comedy too, where people have people on their platforms and stuff, and they have different things with people that they know could possibly be bad people. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I think that that happens a decent amount. And like you, I think it's. I also think people. I, I don't know. This isn't funny, but just like people yeah. who speak up about it, it's like fine. You voice your opinion too, but you just sometimes you don't have all the. I don't know. I, I no, don't think it's not. Uh, here's the thing. No, the defend way, your boy. <laughs> well, the way I think, like, how does Sam Harris, like, vote? And, like, what is he doing for society? And, like, what is he contributing to? I, I haven't looked into it enough to see how yeah. I think he who he is as a person is, as far as his impact is. Yeah, absolutely. You and he seems I mean? like a level. He seems and, like, like a Charles level-headed Murray, enough guy. Yeah. He fucking votes for stuff that promotes white supremacy, yeah. supposedly. But I also haven't looked into it that enough to fucking know if that's true or not. To fucking, I don't know. I haven't looked into them enough. But that's the thing. I don't think you need to waste your time looking into stuff and listening to because it's like, tr- I don't know. I mean, like, tell a. That's a slippery fucking slope, though, where you just are like, well, these people who I because like you just said, people, everybody has some correct opinions and a lot of and then those same people who have a ton of correct opinions have bad ones. So you're just going to trust the opinion of other people and hope that they looked into it enough to have the correct opinion on somebody. Yeah, I just think he's a little bit of a grifter. Like, so he had this, you had the episode he had on the show with that, that like black kid. And he's like, oh, you're probably going to be maligned by uh, the left for some of your opinions. And the kid was talking about how, like, he thinks rap is bad, which is just such a basic. Did he say that he thinks rap is bad? Yeah. Uh, Or did they just, I don't, I'd have to go back and listen to that. When I heard it, I remember them talking about rap, but they were talking broadly about the black population and how they feel about rap. Mm-hmm. Which also it is like a weird that is a weird question though. But Why to the fuck be like, but to be that? like rap is bad. I think that's just a really ignorant thing to say. I don't know. We should do a whole premium episode about this. Okay, yeah. <laughs> let's skip. Let's go back to opioid stuff because I feel like I don't want to get too. I'll I'll get deep into this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So will I. Um, but no. But I just feel like if you're gonna be like rap is bad, then you just seem like kind of a. 
I just I just think he's more of a grifter than you're giving him credit for. I think that there oh. is it's impossible to include enough context and like uh, uh, qualifying stuff to satisfy everybody, mm -hmm. and everybody is so limited in how much they can like say to be like, okay, but I, even though we're talking about this, I want to clarify that I don't feel this way about the, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just like you can't just you just can't please everybody all the time. He's human. Yeah. And but a lot of these guys get. But money. I also I don't listen to him a ton anymore. Yeah. Like I'll listen to uh, episodes occasionally, and I do think that he doesn't approach things the perfect way. And yeah. So it's like you don't think like it's I'm annoying that he puts that he puts the donation thing at the beginning of his show. You can skip past it. He specifically says, if you don't have money to give, I don't want you to give any money. Yeah. And he he knows people know exactly that. I always whenever I listen, I just skip past it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's there all the time. It's nice instead of it popping up at different places and you got to fucking landmine that shit. Right. So I think that's actually kind of considerate. That, but he should take that off for people who pay. Like there yeah. should be episodes that you should be able to pay for, and maybe there are where you. Abby's have to like, deal with I that. give this guy twenty three dollars a month. <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> I wish I had that enough money to be able to just give some dude like that twenty three dollars a month. Yeah, somebody grifted me at uh, Save the Children. I give them twenty three dollars a month. I've given Denver. to Planned Parenthood like, because I've used them before. They've been there for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, I owe you for, guys. Uh, acne treatment, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, do they do that too? I should, I should go back. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Huh. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't. Because most people, when they defend Planned Parenthood, they're like, they do a lot of stuff. They do acne treatment. Do they really? <laughs> and Abby's like, well, I didn't know that. Well, here's I just the thing, use though. them to suck the baby out. <laughs> yeah, no, that's their <laughs> main. It's great for your skin. <laughs> yeah. But no, they, uh, birth control helps with acne sometimes. Yeah. So, right. kind of. Right. Anyway, <laughs> so opioid crisis. What's, this, what's going on? So, um, a bunch of people, Haven't think, heard of what it. are we, 17 minutes in? Are we? 20? <laughs> no, I don't know. Well, yeah, but we're going to cut the beginning of that. Um, um, so, I got 16. Um, so, every, in 2016, I think about 53,000 people died from opioids. And in the book I was reading, uh, it's called Dope. What's the book? We're doing it on your podcast tomorrow. Oh. Dope me... Fiends. No. Dope queens. <laughs> two, <laughs> dope, two dope queens. Two doped up. Dope. Anyway. Queens, let's see. Well, what is it called? Fuck, you sent it to me. Well, anyway, they said that... Uh, uh, yeah, 50,000 people. That's more than are killed by car accidents. I Which think more that's killed by smoking, maybe. Yeah, it says like 115 people every day. It's about a hundred, and some numbers I found were yeah one fifteen, one seventy five, but it's it's high, and in in Pennsylvania it's a big problem. Ohio it's a big problem, mm. and I feel like as comedians sometimes we drive through those states, and uh, yeah. you know we have to perform there. Yeah, and uh, oh boy, you know, <laughs> uh, yeah, seventy six, seventy eight. Or you have family members from those places, and yeah. you go visit, and you're like, Ugh. you're like, what do you people do out here? Yeah. Like, we do pills. <laughs> I I honestly do you are you guys around people who are fucked up from that shit or no? But that I saw that PBS. He made me watch that PBS documentary. Uh -huh. uh, it was like called the Opioid Crisis. But like this girl talked about her dad. Um, he got hurt in a mining accident. Oh, so it's like yeah. a coal miner, and then he got right. hooked on the drugs, and then. That's kind of the root, that's kind of the root of the problem. Whereas, like a lot of these, a lot, a lot of a lot of drug epidemics start out in the cities and then kind of make their way out to the suburbs or rural areas. But yeah. this, like, specifically started in places like Appalachia, like upstate New York, like uh, that's the same, right? Um, like Ohio, <laughs> like Maine, <laughs> where there's like mining, milling, logging. And um, where people have to like, where people kind of like bust their asses to make a living, and then they like, I'm you know, I'm in pain, and they're prescribed these um, yeah. these opioids. So I am somewhat ignorant. I didn't look this up. So mm -hmm. I know the general idea of it, but like heroin is an op like what all yeah. what all does this really heroin encompass? Heroin is like an opioid. Oxycontin. So Heroin. What else? You got oxycodone, oh, opana, shit. He's got Vicodin, a fucking... and then uh, it's either oxycodone or hydrocortisone or hydrocortisone. So opi so opioids is uh, a drug that comes from like 
cooking down the poppy plant, like a poppy seed. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's why I always get a poppy seed bagel at the... Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah. At Merge, yeah. <laughs> fall asleep in my chair. <laughs> um, how's your chair, by the way? Oh, this you is fantastic. The, yeah. 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 Could you the comment purchase, on, the, right? on the $200 gaming chair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, this was yeah. was this for the podcast specifically? Yes. It's, you know, I'm building an office slash uh, studio in yeah, there. I'm yeah, trying yeah. to build a table. Nice. Have Nick come over, maybe. I want to build a circular table. Okay. It's yeah. more difficult. It's yep. more difficult. You have space? Do you have, like, outdoor space? Yeah, I have a backyard. Actually, I was there the other day, and I was walking down, and there was a rat. And I, I was walking down the basement and it was like maybe four feet away from me and it's like covered in flies and then it's breathing. I guess it ate poison or something. Hell yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this is why I need a gun. I only want a gun to put do this thing out of its for, misery. Do you, have, do you have uh, any, do you feel bad for animals? Like, do you yeah. put them outside instead of killing them? Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Uh, With. Like a rat. Like on a like glue if trap? You, if you saw a rat. A uh, glue trap, you have to kill it because it's like you're peeling their feet off. Oh, uh, fuck. I've whatever. never had yeah. to do that. Uh, no, but even like a caterpillar, or like, I mean, flies I'll kill, mosquitoes I'll kill, but like, it, I think if you kill like a caterpillar, you should be probably locked up. Those things <laughs> yeah, are cool. Yeah, no, to- or a roly you know? poly. That's rude. As a kid, we I had mean, that. you can flick a roly poly, but if you kill it. Wait, do you know what a roly poly is? <laughs> <No>. <gasps> do you know what a roly poly is? It's like is? a fuzzy thing, right? They're, I wonder if there's another name for them because you have to know what a roly poly is. Like mm-hmm. a caterpillar? No, they're like these little. Is it fuzzy? They look like they look like rat poop almost. You know, they're like these small brown. I guess I'll pull up a picture for you. That's oh yeah yeah. They look like little. How do you little not, bugs that are underneath you know what's trees? Crazy, though? When you lift up a tree like on the ground, oh, they're okay. like a, all those motherfuckers. And I remember not being yeah. I remember not being scared of roly polies. Like I would mm-hmm. like let them crawl on me. Is it? But um, yeah. Did you? I guess it was only one part of my life that I ever saw roly polies. Hmm. I guess I saw lightning bugs for the first time in a long time the other day, too. Yeah, it's magical, huh? Oh, yeah, okay. All right. I've seen that bug before. Anyway. When I was a kid, I had, like, a live capture a chipmunk trap where we put peanut butter in the center, and then it would, like... It would, a chipmunk trap? Yeah, yeah, because the chipmunks would, like, get all in the garage and stuff, and it's like, you don't want... Oh, chipmunk. Oh, my gosh. I was yeah. picturing... I, was, I heard the word like chipmunk. Squirrel. Yeah, 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 but for some reason was thinking about some kind of, like monkey and i was like that is fucking insane and We're that doesn't monkeys. i was like you're just lying <laughs> why, are you just, why are you just lying to my face right now no. <laughs> nope <laughs> um Ugh. but yeah we would we would like drive like to the other side of town and just drop it off and like be like go yeah <laughs> you're be free somebody else's problem yeah exactly Damn. Wait, so do you, you don't know anybody that's really have you seen many people suffering i've this just, I, i've known two people in the past couple of years who've died of a heroin overdose. So Damn. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where that comes from. And it, pr- it probably does have something to do with people getting Oxycontins. Because a lot of times mm. what happens is, you know, someone goes in for a... Uh, it, like, these things are, like, so addictive. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't... It's not really... It's not... Oh, it's not really talked about how addictive they are. And I think what, what the statistic that I read was, like, if you're hooked on Oxycontin, it takes, like, a year or something to be... You have to be off it for a year. Yeah. To like, and how quickly do you get hooked? Because I've gotten like eighteen or, or like twenty before, and it's like oxycontin. Yeah, yeah, and it's like it's a good. It those are great. Did you like it? Yeah, of course. Well, here's the thing. I I broke my collarbone and had to take some, or I was prescribed oxy shit for that, mm-hmm. and it made me nauseous. And I really hate being nauseous. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just like I took some Tylenol, some a lot of Tylenol and stuff, but I. I I think I sometimes, depending on how much pain it is, would rather deal with some pain than nausea. Wow. Mm. Yeah, I just got itchy, but like, I like Ooh, the feeling of see, being itchy, fucked up ugh. a little bit. Well, and also, do you guys like? There's something sometimes. It's almost like the real drug dealers are like the government. <laughs> <laughs> damn, damn, yeah. damn, 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 damn. Yeah. That is wow. deep. Make sure to cut that Dude. and use that as a promotion wow. for this episode. This is why, so smart. This is, why, <laughs> this is why I hate comedy sometimes because like you'll see like uh, on like uh, whatever Huff Post or whatever like check out this sketch about doctors but they're like drug dealers and, and you're like, supposed Whoa, to be like so I've never brilliant. thought about them that way before and yeah. now I'm thinking about my doctors different. Yeah. Mm. I watched this college humor sketch the other day and I, it was just 
just like about how white people dis- like pretend they discovered stuff. And I wanted to kind of be like, where is the humor? There, well, here's you guys the thing. didn't tell a it's single. It's kind of like how racist joke go, dra- jokes go, where it's like, it's not that I'm a, f- it's just like, it's not You're like, funny. where's the racism? This is just like, we get it. <laughs> this is a joke, but where is the, the racism that I love so much? Yeah. Uh, what, how, how, how? Wait, what about how what? You said it's like how racist jokes go. Oh, where where, oh, where it's, it's not, not like well, yeah. Sometimes people think that it's like oh, well, you just don't want to hear about this, and it's like no, it's just like we've heard this so many times, and you're not doing it in a new different way. Yeah. It's like oh, you hate white people too. Cool, you hate women or you hate men. Mm-hmm. Right, you right, hate right. white men. It's just like hacky jokes are hacky jokes. Yeah, Marie is here by the way. She's in my kitchen. <laughs> Hi, Marie. Hi. Hey. Um. Carry on. <laughs> You guys might remember Maria from the <laughs> premium episode where we tried to help her find love. Oh. But she's got very high standards. Won't won't fuck Stavros. Oh. Oh, well, I Thank God. No, no, no. Don't nah, do you're it. Not intri- no, you're absolutely. Not- <laughs> <laughs> Save. If you, anybody they suggest, come to me and and I'll give you my opinion. She was, but she was like not, in, she wasn't interested at all. She bought, <laughs> she, and she fat shamed him. I was not- <laughs> <laughs> I like you more and more, Marie. <laughs> I said I like you more and more. <laughs> oh, I'll take Ooh. one. That's very kind. Thanks. Cool. Oh, he's he's delightful. I love Stav. You said but don't fuck you him. said is this the guy who ate Stavros? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't know. Maybe he's not like relationship material. Who who knows? No, he. (laughs) He They'd be good together. I like stuff. I have nothing against stuff, but it doesn't. He's not trying to. If she's looking for love, yeah, stuff is stuff's on the road, baby. He's on the road. Yeah, stuff's on. Yeah, just let him meet. You know, and if they, if they. Oh, I'm being a total cock block right now. Go on a date with stuff. Yeah, Uh, let him. Sorry. If they meet and then they hit it off, who knows? Yeah, maybe. Love is love. Yeah, you're. uh, (laughs) Is love. (laughs) You haven't sowed your oats until you have, you know? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Or whatever. I sowed mine. They I'm say. completely happy. So anyway, <laughs> back, in, back in 1997, uh, a guy, a uh, uh, detective named Richard Stollard was sitting in his car. He had this informant who, and the guy was like, yeah, they're selling this new thing. It's called Oxy. He said, uh-huh. <laughs> It's called Oxy Hoosima Watches. Oxy, he goes, it's called Oxy Compton, something like that. No one, <laughs> no one, Oxy Compton. No one knew, no one knew what Oxy Cotton was in the, in the early 90s. And um, according to this book, pill users were already misusing it to intensify their high. Um, and it came in a higher dosage than standard painkillers. Um, an 80 milligram tablet on the street sold for $80, making its potential for black market sales higher. Huh. than most other pills. So 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 a lot of times what happens is people like they get they they're in a they're working in a steel mill, they're lifting heavy <laughs> beams all day, like my back hurts and the doctor's like, I got something for you. They're like before they can even say my back hurts, the, the doctor's writing a, a prescription for oxycotton. Yeah. Which is kind of the same thing we do with uh Ibuprofen you know, when I was in the military. So, Oh yeah, yeah. Ibuprofen. ibuprofen. You guys abused ibuprofen. Uh, yeah. Fucking nerds. <laughs> the Air Force. Military yeah. people are. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like my stomach line <laughs> is really completely are. fucked up now. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt would do like. Did but you guys, ibuprofen. Matt like, how addicted, much ibuprofen would you get? It was like emergency. Huge, <laughs> it was like huge, huge, like little things. Like, you guys were in so much pain all the time. Well, yeah. I mean, like, you know, you could just go get prescribed it, and it's like if you could get a big bottle of it, you could have it. You know, I guess I just people are Matt, like, Matt yeah. would do like a whole tube of airborne every day. Airborne. Yeah. You know, that immune system. Yeah. Thing. The fizzy oh. stuff before you go on the airplane. <laughs> he did a, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a handle of emergency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Oxycontin comes out. It's a very powerful drug. <laughs> Uh, it's a, Oxycontin's a hell of a drug. <laughs> nice. James. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it was. Um, it's bad, and doctors are just handing it out willy nilly. Yeah. So in the late 1990s, pharmaceutical companies reassured the the medical community that these would not be addictive. So it was like they were lying to doctors. They were lying to people. Um, right. I think this is a great point to show you guys this pharma uh, marketing video ad. 
Oh yeah, you guys want to okay. listen because, to this? Because and let's set this up. There was a, there was a big lobby in the in the mid '90s for um for like pain treatment, you know. And there was a story in the New York Times, I think, in the year 2000, where it's like this lady was in her this elderly woman wasn't given proper pain treatment. Oh, so so they went after like a victim thing. Like people aren't getting enough of this. Yeah, that was kind of like their lobby. But also the thing is, like, if someone's in pain, you can't really you can't gauge someone's pain you it's don't. just it's pain exactly right? they, so, it's only yeah. what you can tell from that and also they were talking about the arthur guy who bought the business he was an ad stuff mm-hmm. like he was an ad guy so then his arthur, two arthur sackler right yeah arthur, yeah, we'll arthur sackler we'll and then his two brothers were the ones who ran the company while yeah. he was go doing ad stuff and it's like what a deadly I combination so. that is drugs and then somebody who's good at <laughs> understanding markets and yeah. marketing to people i mean that's right i think more drugs should because really, that. drugs should be just what what drugs should be. Is, they should be made by an old Chinese man in a basement who just want to help people. You know, <laughs> yeah. You right. go to Chinatown. You go to the. You know, you go to. No, the, they're just trying to make their to dollar the too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. they? Oh yeah, I was like, I was in the Sell subway. You a Dude, one of the funniest. I, it just really stuck with me. I was in the subway and there was just like Asian here's, guy. Here's Abby's story about all Chinese people. <laughs> Every single one. No, all Asians, because I didn't know what kind he was. I'm not okay. Sure, sure. He sure. was an Asian guy, and he just there was a white guy like leaned over in front of him on a chair, and he had his hand, you know, behind his back, almost like a healing motion, you know, but on the subway. Uh, this was uh, like on, sorry, in the subway, like. Not on the subway train itself, yeah. but in down there. Just waiting. And uh, he just like this guy, the white guy was his eyes were closed, and he thinks he's being healed. And the the white the China, whatever Asian guy just looked like bored. Yeah. You know what I mean? He just looked like, <laughs> oh, I hate that. I'm, he looked like he was at work like a nine to five. <laughs> yeah. And he just was over it, and it was just so. This person thinks he's getting some. Weird healing. Well, he's experience. happy he doesn't have to wear the wig that day. Pretend he's a, <laughs> a lady. Didn't <laughs> give it. HJ's. He's like, oh god, yeah, I guess this is better than what was it? It was like a healing. It was like hand. a healing center. No, it was just like literally in between walking from one train just to the other. Two crazy people, right? Yeah, you know, like sub, like oh, almost yeah. like a subway performer. But one, you know, oh, like okay. on the side, like like people like are playing their guitar on the side, but this guy's just healing on the side. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen a half-hearted Showtime before? Those guys always give it 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever, think I've, I've never that seen was an a half-hearted Showtime. I couldn't Showtime. tell. A half-hearted Showtime? Just people being half-hearted about their little shows? No, about like the, 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 the subway, subway dancers. dancers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've them never doing, seen that those guys yeah. not give 120%. You know, doing, I have seen them not give 120%. Oh, wow. I've seen them I've seen a couple times where they they look like oh, She sees fuck. a fat. They're always super cut. She sees a fat one. <laughs> it's yeah, just, he was it's really Keenan not. Thompson. <laughs> He's like trying his best, but I'm not giving him <laughs> yeah. any credit for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, let's watch this commercial. So <laughs> oh, that yeah. was kind of like, now I guess they found a way to sort of like push that lobby or whatever, but that, that, this was like a big thing in the, in the, in the mid nineties. Let's treat people for their pain. Let's, oh, yeah, we looks- have to treat pain. They wanted pain to be like the fifth vital sign or something. I don't even know what the fifth fourth. vital sign. He looks like a dinosaur or like a reptile. Yeah. Don't be afraid to take what they give you. Often, it will be an opioid medication. In the 1990s, new opioid medications were introduced to treat pain. Much of the information about these new drugs came from pharmaceutical companies. Some patients may be afraid of taking opioids because they're perceived as too strong or addictive. (laughs) But that is far from actual fact. This is so funny. The medical community started to prescribe so... Yeah, so that's what happened. They were like, accurate? "No, it's not addictive." They, well, you know. how many? What percentage? What percentage actually do get addicted? Did anybody? Come oh, across uh, that? I well, don't on know. That, but I think. Well, on that they infographic, said, they just said one percent. So that was like clearly a lie. They said you can get addicted from like a fourteen-day supply. But 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 what percentage? Roughly what twenty-one percentage? to twenty-nine percent of patients prescribed opioids for chronic pain misuse them. So just imagine this guy okay. goes to this audition to be in this thing, and there's like ten guys. Be like, don't be afraid of what they give you. <laughs> don't be afraid of what they give you. <laughs> don't be afraid of what they give just you. In the yeah. mirror. Yeah. There's probably don't be afraid of what they give you. There's probably like a, at least a thousand actors that would step over their own mother for that <laughs> for that job. And they probably didn't. Why have aren't to... we all just in the woods making shelves? Dude, one day. Dude. Yeah. 
corporate uh, videos like that, that that's big time money. Whoever shot that. Is it? Yeah. Let's oh, get yeah. into that. Do you guys want to just, mm. you know what? Let's make turn this off right now. Let's make a, let's <laughs> let's make a sexually harass, a sexual harassment training video where we'll, we'll harass. I'll be the guy who harasses Matt. Okay. <laughs> oh, perfect. And then you can be like the oh. HR lady who's like, wait a minute. That's not right. <laughs> I just, like, I just oh, wanted, Matt, I love your skirt over there. <laughs> I just wanted to take his pants off and, <laughs> and help me fix my computer. <laughs> I just need my computer now, fixed. Now, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Um, we got more stuff yeah. between. We can make a pro. <laughs> we, we'll make a pro sexual harassment video. Okay. Where it's like, don't harass. Or you can harass the retarded IT guy at your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as he's male. Yeah. The designated harasser. Designated harasser. You're harassi. the designated harasser. You're Italian. That makes sense. The designated yeah. harassee. Yeah. That's what I meant. At, the, at yeah, your I mean, job. Yeah, that's just the dynamic that would have to happen here. Yeah. Between 8 and 12% uh, develop an opioid use disorder. 4 to 6% uh, misuse prescription and transition to heroin. So 5%. percent. Hmm, Damn, that's a pretty good fucking... Sorry, folks. Somebody misses his mommy. Someone's a mama's boy. <laughs> Does that piss Not you off? Not me. Not me. It's, yeah. it's Frankie. Don't you want attention? Does that upset you? Do you get jealous? He like I think he likes me better than Deb. Why is he whining then? You're here. I don't know. Frankie. Yeah. This is disrespect and he should get hit. Yeah, get he his emotions he hard. She left it. Right. Yeah. Oh, come here, Frankie. Um Um I I have a I have a family member who went to jail for selling prescriptions. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if they're opioid ones. I wonder if it's like, yeah, I wonder if that's probably because it was in, you know, Missouri. Uh-huh. And that's probably one of the places that, because, well, I don't know. I don't know if it's. How long is a sentence like that? <sighs> that's a whole fucking thing. I think if at you don't least four years. This one. Four years? Wow. I think, yeah, I guess it's not all of my business to tell, but sure. it is like, it is that's crazy because, you know, her she had a baby and everything and like the husband is the one who is like sure. into all these drug stuff and like just hasn't been caught and there's like mafia e kind of things with like rednecky white people isn't that crazy yeah yeah they call themselves like corn mafia or some shit anyway you got work tomorrow yeah of course i do but whatever all right so what about this opioid so they give th- so these people are like they give to a lot of good causes but they're like okay. So this all right. Artist. So let's, let's start from from back back in the fifties, right? So the so OxyContin was it's a, it was the brainchild of a family owned pharmaceutical company called Purdue Frederick, which is based in Stamford, Connecticut. You ever been to Stamford, Connecticut? Yeah, I have. Very, you know what it's like? Very sterile. Very. I like, dated a guy whose family that's from there. Yeah, they say it's the most boring town in all of Connecticut, which is like one of the most boring states. I I feel like. Yeah. Um. But uh, there was some really well. I was close to Stamford. There was some really pretty areas around there but the city itself was very boring yeah yeah i didn't go around it mm-hmm. just drove through it okay. Oof. yeah Oof. so there's three brothers there's there's arthur mortimer and raymond sackler and they sort of have this like little startup pharmaceutical company that they bought um they bought it for i think it was twenty thousand dollars or no what it, no, no I'm, I'm sorry. They bought the company from its original Manhattan-based owners. That only had a few employees, and their annual sales were like twenty thousand dollars. This is like this little drug company, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. probably some old guy, you know, trying to send his big-titted daughter to dance recital, or <laughs> sure, you sure. know, just working hard for his family. And they were like, you know what? Get the fuck out of here. We got big plans for this place. Because Arthur Sackler was like a real, he was the oldest brother. He was like this kind of like crazy sort of go getter, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's who kind of like we're going to spend the next 20 minutes talking about Uh, that. I wanted this to be kind of like the meat of the show, but, you know, but um, this, this, so they bought this company for not a lot of money. They bought this company not a lot of money. They made just like Bayer made heroin. They made um, Oxycontin. Bayer made heroin. Yeah. Yeah, oh, because what that. happened was in the 1800s, people got addicted to morphine, oh. and then doctors would just prescribe it to people, and there was like, yeah, there were morphine addictions, and they were like, I don't know about that. Is but then, morphine but then, and heroin pretty much, what's, what's are those super similar? I think it's different. I think heroin, you can, wait, I have I have it in my nose here. Um, This said in the, in the yeah, 
they said if 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 the Bayer company could pitch heroin as a new and non addictive substitute for morphine, they would strike it rich. So they were allowed to. So they they started ma- cranking out heroin in 1899, and then a lot of the people were like doctor approved users. But it was kind of like the same thing where like people started doing all this heroin and then like some congressman was like, we surely we should cut this back on the on the just we shouldn't keep doing this just so pharmaceutical profits can be, you know, can be high. Like we shouldn't like I I forget I have this here too, but he this fuck he was like, <laughs> he was like, surely, it, the surely the ethical thing to do is to cut back production of this, yeah, this yeah, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. We shouldn't Arthur. be making it just because. Yeah. No, this this is like the Bayer company. Yeah, oh, but okay. the you know they yeah. sort of they sort of it, they kind of did the same thing. They had this you know, yeah, this legal drug, yeah. this legal. That's pain. A, that's the problem with those huge companies is they just pivot and the, and they like figure out the next step whether they don't really fucking care you know what i mean yeah like it's all the, the have you seen that netflix documentary they just don't Dirty care Money? man <laughs> yeah. they just don't care <laughs> they, i didn't i have to dismantle the corporation <laughs> they don't they i don't just think don't i have care. seen that what is it I, dirty money i don't think i've seen it yeah yet. oh i mean it's like different companies and stuff but like one was like volkswagen and they were like tricking the uh <gasps> i uh, maybe i have seen that because yeah. they were saying that it was like not putting out as many emissions and it was like yeah. putting out more right it was just like faking the test and then like when you took it on the road it was like hazardous so like people with uh you know asthma and stuff in these like urban areas felt betrayed from Hell volkswagen yeah, dude. so you can't present yourself like that yeah, yeah. who cares about them huh <laughs> Not so me. I mean, like that's that that's the type of thing that this kind of reminds me of it with yeah. this this family running this, you know. They're like, "What are you gonna do? <laughs> Tell girls from Staten Island they can't drive a Jetta?" <laughs> uh-huh. Well, then you see where their morals lie. Where they're like, "Okay, well, we can justify this by putting all of our money into art and right science." So they're worth fourteen right. billion dollars. The Sacklers, right? So let's talk about the Sacklers a little bit because the, the Sacklers split are actually between twenty of the family members, right? According to this magazine. Um, but like, like you said, what, what did they donate to the Met, the, the Templar of Den- Dendar? Have, did you see that photo of that? It's at the Met. Yes, they have like, uh, so, so let me, let me take you guys back a little bit. So Arthur Sackler was kind of like the, he was the oldest brother. He was sort of like the go getter, the one who was kind of like the, you know, maybe, maybe you could say he was a psychopath. I, sure. I, I don't know. But, um, he was the guy who like sort of wanted to make this uh, a big thing. Yeah. He was into collecting art. He got really into collecting, um, Chinese artifacts, which I don't know if we have time to talk about this, but. It's just so funny, like, you acquire a certain amount of money and you're comfortable, but yeah. there, it's never, it's never enough. Like, yeah. you get, like, like, I would, I, I if I had one Chinese artifact in here, I would think that was pretty cool. One, <laughs> like a sword. One, yeah, one, <laughs> like, one, like, seventh century yeah. war helmet or something, or, like, a dragon, right. I don't know, or, like, a... No, no, Just no, as no, long no. as it's not a replica, it has to be, like, worn from a true samurai. Yeah, like a, like a samurai knife. Well, you know, like you a, get that one cool samurai sword, and then friends come over, they see it, and that's cool. But then they've seen it. Now seen you need it. a new thing. You need a new one. <laughs> yeah. Right. There should be, you know, how like they have those services. <laughs> you, need, you need a, a, like a, a suit of a, armor. A, a the suit of armor, and then, you need, a, and then you need a day laborer to model it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The scare them. I don't know about time. the day laborer part. Maybe. Mm hmm. But yeah, every month you get sent a new. Well, you're, you don't have a rich person's mentality. I don't. There's no point in being I rich really, if you can't yeah. make four people. Mike do doesn't want to be you. inside the suit. Uh, he I wish, wants to be. Yeah. I wish I had more of a rich people mentality. I do too. I know. But the I thing hate, is, you're normal because you have friends. You have people who like you. You're set. You're to some uh, extent. You're satisfied with where your life is. You're not sure. like. <laughs> you're not like money, 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 money. Because that's that's another thing about these people. The only wor- money I the worry sacklers. about is the the immediate needs. <laughs> right. You know what I mean. Right. And then maybe you buy but yourself. But then you start to get older, and you're like, okay, all right, I'll fucking become a cog in the machine somehow. Yeah. So I can get that money. 
I mean, what am I into now? I just want like power tools now. Yes. You're yeah, also totally. into money. You like last night at like 1 a.m. You like texted me that motivational, <laughs> like it was like this Instagram photo. Well, and yeah. Matt needs a little kick in the ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Our was, numbers aren't growing as fast. But it was as just like, like one million dollars divided a couple different ways, like how to become a it was millionaire, like how to make a million dollars. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this Instagram called <laughs> Alpha Leaders. And it's, of I know course it sounds you are. like. But listen, I know it sounds like the stupidest no, thing. No, send that to me. But I'm into it. Honestly, it's got <laughs> some great stuff in here. Is it, is it just like suck it up pussies? Is that what kind of the general it's, idea? It's a little, it? it's a little more, it's a little sh- smarter than that. Okay. It's just like, you know, a million divided by 12 divided by, you know, the, and then it has like certain increments. You could get this many people to pay this much to make a million dollars. You could get this many people to pay this much. Oh, okay. You could get this many people to pay monthly. A hundred hookers for yeah. five is, dollars or five hundred, <laughs> whatever you get it. Yeah, life is too short to be living somebody else's dream, Hugh Hefner. Hell yeah. And then somebody said, and actually, no, this wasn't on here, but you know, it's like let me pull Bill, up the B- one Bill you Burr sent me though. That, Bill Burr has that quote about you know being on the road or whatever and sleeping on couches, and he's like, it's better than waking up to a job you don't like and a person you don't want to be with. Or I, I that yeah. is a very I don't remember the exact. Oh, here's program. a good one. You here's a good it. one. This is what he sent me at one a.m. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so yeah, you know what? what? You're fucking welcome that I sent that to <laughs> yeah, you. Dude. You're welcome that I shared stuff with you to get you motivated. <laughs> because you know what? I bought you a fucking chair, okay? Yeah, this Deb- is a nice Deborah. Chair. Br- no, I bought Matt a chair though. Deborah, oh. bring Matt's chair in here. Please, if you don't mind. <laughs> wow, Show ungrateful. <laughs> Who me? No, no me. He's I know. Me. I got him a thirty dollar chair. I'll turn on whoever. Who do you guys want me to turn on? on right the now? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, th- look, here, here's the thing. <laughs> what? Here, yeah, I know. It tastes like cough medicine, right? It's yeah, not, it's honey whiskey. Okay. Um. Ugh. Here's the thing from Alpha Leaders. You have $86,400 in your account and someone stole $10 from you. Would you be upset and throw all of the $86,390 away in hopes of getting back at that person who took your $10 or move on and live? What's the point? See, we have 86,400 seconds in every day. So don't let someone's negative 10 seconds ruin the rest sure. of the other... Eight eighty six thousand totally. three hundred ninety. Don't sweat the small stuff. Life is bigger than that. So it's like when a fucking Hasidic Jewish school bus <laughs> cuts you off, you gotta let it go. You get a couple. You can't of, you carry get a couple it around. Of slurs out. You can't. You can't go on four chan. That's you why can't slurs spend the rest exist. Of your night on four chan. That's why slurs exist. <laughs> right. So it's it cuts it's, down on time. It's, it's either <laughs> it's either five slurs or three hours of brooding. Sure. I love that a guy but, invented slurs as a means of saving time. Yeah. He's like, All right, guys, look. <laughs> It's just two syllables and you can move on with your day. It's time Dude, the church of microscene. <laughs> yeah. You're like in the confession booth. He's like, um, excuse me. <laughs> 52 I noticed, slurs. Hello. It's going to be a matriarchal <laughs> church. I noticed all my friends are just walking around mad at Italians. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, exactly. That's my church. I hate Italians. So, yeah. <laughs> you just call them a dago and move on with your yeah, life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm realizing. So I kind of wish, I wish that we. We uh, the 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 Sacklers are the, are the ones who made this uh, drug. They're kind of like responsible for this crisis. And I wish, uh, dude. Here's the thing: Is this yeah. Arthur guy cool at a party? You know what I mean? That's what I want to know. You know what I mean? Probably Can not. I have he's, a good collect, conversation he's collecting with him? Chinese art. <laughs> he's got storage units full of Chinese <laughs> artifacts. I bet yeah, he's great. I bet he's, constantly... he's a lot of fun. He listens. He makes <laughs> eye contact. You know. Uh, I wonder if he's just constantly trying to make people care about the stupid shit he buys with all his money. Probably, but I think that's what happens to a lot of these rich people where it's like their parents don't are cold and just don't tell them they love them or anything and they're like, I will, what make, about this? I will make the whole world respect me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they do get rich <laughs> and then and then they... Dude, yeah. their dad said, oh, that's cool but, about a motorcycle they bought and they've been chasing that ever since. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what peak. about this, dad? <laughs> a whole museum. Yeah. Yeah, like there's definitely something missing in them. So, so this oh, guy. Sure. So I think this guy, this guy Arthur, Arthur uh, Sackler was just obsessed with like recognition and people liking him. And I think that's like at the core of a lot of rich people. Like they do. Like yeah. Trump wants to be liked. They want to be liked. They want to be accepted. They want to be welcomed into. You know, they want to go to the Emmys party. They sure. want to like. Sure. They want to go to. There's nothing rich people want more than to fit. They want to go to one of Colin Joseph's gay sex yes. party. 
<laughs> Who doesn't want to go to that? Yeah. I Come mean, I, I left when I found that it was gay. <laughs> I was like, I got to go. <laughs> I got to go jerk uh, off thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to just carry this memory around. I don't want to be embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. It's more fun to think about anyway. Um, yeah, but that was that was sort of his deal. Now, let's talk about the next generation of the Sacklers. Yeah. Actually. In July, uh, the the last remaining brother died at 97 year old. Oh, it's July. Yeah. And Raymond was the youngest brother. And Raymond was kind of like, Raymond was a little uh, a little more easygoing, I think. Yeah. Raymond didn't experience the Great Depression like his older brothers did. Last year. So, sure, sure. so, so this article's a year old. Anything. So it was last yeah. year. Okay. But they were but they were also like, eh, let's just let Raymond enjoy his life. Mm-hmm. You know, because he doesn't, he's not like a, I guess he wasn't a fighter, you know? Right. He was the one who didn't, he didn't participate or what's Raymond's deal? He was the youngest one, the youngest brother. And he didn't, he just did a little, he, um, he was involved though. He was involved. Yeah. What do you mean they let him I do? I think he ran, he like, ran some arm of the company, but he wasn't like, I, I just imagine like Raymond, he wasn't to the not forefront be of the movement. Yeah. Okay. I imagine Raymond not being like a shark. Right. You know? Yeah. 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 He's just the guy who's just happy to be there. Yeah. yeah he's a follower. Yeah. And his brother's like, why, why didn't you, why didn't you fire that man? <laughs> why didn't you bring him into your office and fire him in front of your son? <laughs> you know? Or get him addicted to Oxycontin. Yeah. And actually his, then it's, a, that's way worse and his family has to watch him fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Oop. Um, it's just, it's just so sad. It really does show you how like the working class just like gets fucked. Like you could be oh, a guy so who built these people's palace and you like sp- threw out your back and they're like Oxycontin and then yeah. they kill you. <laughs> yeah. You know, you got to pay to die. Yeah. Then you're sucking dick for more Oxycontin. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever. Or, make, or, or, or making, or making your daughter do it. Man. Or making your daughter do it. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. So uh, Oxycontin, is that what... Is that she what, better be getting some of that Oxycontin too, you know? <laughs> she, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Fair it, wages. What? Um, is that what Heath Ledger died on? I'm not sure. No, the Olsen twins killed him. <laughs> oh, yeah, but how but, did they kill him though? Right. Um, <laughs> he was... Uh, is that actually... like? Do you follow a lot of conspiracy theories? I'm selective with the ones that I follow. Yeah, yeah. but do, do you? Mm, I mean, I enjoy them, but I, I enjoy I'm them not. Too. I'm not like a. Yeah. But did how big of a contra or how big of a conspiracy theory was it that the Olsen twins killed Heath? I don't. I think it's like a four. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But what's what's one that everybody kind of nine eleven on? Everybody yeah. and I. Everybody I've ever literally I've never had somebody not think. That it's a conspiracy. Really? We just did a 9-11 no, episode but. last <laughs> We did a 9-11 episode last week. Did you? Yeah. yeah. We, we, we towed that. the middle of the road. <laughs> well, I feel like I can us. argue both sides as passionately. It's fun. I just like to be yeah. taken in. I like to listen. I just get taken in their world of yeah, that sure. surfer. There's that surfer guy. Mm-hmm. Guy who like survived. Oh, yeah. You know, there's, I'm like, yes, tell me more. But also, sometimes when you look at history, like the events of history are so random and these little things get us pulled into these like big conflicts and stuff. So it's like, and sometimes it's more comforting for people to be like, oh, it's a conspiracy than to just accept that we're just a bunch of random. Yeah, but you can, you can still be a victim in in somebody else's, like it can still be a conspiracy and and innocent people get, become victims in it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like. It becomes a new natural disaster. Yeah. Yeah. And what did Larry Silverstein mean when he said pull it as well? What do so, you mean? know about that? What? <laughs> did the Building 7 explosion. Larry Silverstein blew up Building 7. <laughs> Fucking knew it. And he owned I the mean, building. the second I heard Silverstein, I was like, knew it. <laughs> <laughs> Your mind changed immediately. <laughs> we're going to play. We're gonna, all clicked. <laughs> we're going to play a game with Abby right now. Here's a. <laughs> We're going to give Abby a pen and a piece of paper, and we're going to say, draw Larry Silverstein. <laughs> and we're going to see how accurate it is. It's going to be a how profile. How close to it. Yeah, how close he looks. So, I'll be tasteful, yeah. but he will still look. <laughs> It'll be yeah. like a coin. See, I don't draw. Here's the thing. It's going to look way more racist than it's supposed to just because I'm a bad artist. You right. know what I mean? Right, right. You know? Same. Yeah. I don't want to take responsibility for my bad art. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's another thing that Arthur Sackler would do is what he would do is he would like he would have a muse he have museums in on his art collecting totally, stuff. Totally. So he would have the museum sell him Chinese artifacts at nineteen twenties prices. And then he would donate the pieces to the museum and get a huge tax write off at the nineteen sixties prices that he was Ugh. so And this guy's yeah. dead? He's dead. Bummer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but rich people are so lame. It's like at least if you're in the mob, you're like hijacking trucks and eating pasta, and you know, right? There's yeah. wars around. Dude, there's like pasta is so. Is, I'm so hungry. Will you make me some pasta real quick? Do you have some? The, there's some back there. Yeah. All oh, right. Uh, I'll throw it in the microwave. I'm so excited. So I'll throw it in the microwave after the. <gasps> wow. Now it's got my sauce. Now I, I mean, this batch of sauce was fine. It was fine. Okay, I trust that it's good enough. Yeah. Dude, I love, that's the thing, Italian food, I'll just never get tired of it, ever. Yeah. It's the best. Is that your favorite yeah. kind of food? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's got to be. That's the one thing I'll, I'll, I'll give My the Italians. My second favorite rotates, and right now it's Jimmy. Yeah, no, that's what we, that's kind of what we do. You guys get well. to get away with so much because lasagna is so good. good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Spaghetti is so simple and delicious. Dude, like just fresh dough like our minds. anything. So good. Yeah. Yeah, because because people well, get Italian to make spaghetti and pretty... feel like they made a meal when it's so mm -hmm. easy. Italian cuisine is pretty simple in the way that like you can put any dish in front of me and I can probably recreate it. Yeah, you know, I could probably make it. It's there's only Whoa. a few components to um to it. Yeah, wait, maybe we'll do this at the end of the episode. There's a guy with a YouTube channel. He's like a YouTube cook, mm -hmm. and his name is um do here uh O R S. A R A. Wait here. Do you want me to put it on mine? Yeah, but do uh, his sausage and pepper recipe. Ooh. I just want you to hear this guy because he's like, I, I mean, I don't know what his education level is, but it, you get the impression it's not that high. <laughs> Here we go. Chicken pepper. Now I was boiling the sausage. It's for five minutes. I got the sweet. It's hot. Now, first thing I don't want. But I could watch this guy all day. I don't want to punch the sausage. Get all the Best juice investment of our life, Abby. But I uh, want to YouTube sir, premium, you no ads. Much. We are ruined me. if there's, this if there's content like this out really there now, good you know? today right. to pick up the sausage. <laughs> hey, we're just in this guy's fucking kitchen. Here's really thing, nice. he can do just audio. Thank you very much. And I'll tell you what, if you're making sausage and peppers, game. that is a good way to cook the sauce. You cook them in okay. water first because yeah. it retains the moisture. Totally. Yeah. Anyway, listen, turn that off because I, I really did want to do it. This guy then, could start his own them, Fiverr account. Do you then throw them in the okay. oven or, or on the grill? You to put get them on the, the yeah, like a cast iron skillet for cast get the get the crust okay, on the outside. Okay, yeah, but yeah, cooking yeah. them in water, it'll make them retain no, course, the moisture. I always fuck that up. I just say, of course. I don't know much about cooking. I'm not great at it. It's not that hard. That guy should just start his own Fiverr account where he says swear words in that <laughs> it's Italian accent. Yeah. All right. So I really did want to take like a deep dive into okay, this. Okay, Arthur. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's Ar go. So, okay, so Arthur. So we're done with that generation. Now let's talk about the next generation of Sacklers. So Raven, the youngest brother, had a son named uh, Richard Sackler. Okay. And uh, Richard seems like... Uh, he seems like kind of the the perfect storm of like a villain because he's a guy who I don't think he had to really work for anything. Of course. Now let's, but like you mentioned before with the Sacklers, right? Like they are very into like, you know, donating money to Ooh. science. One thing I did see is buying art, they supporting were, arts. They were like super interested in supporting, mental they fund illness. Podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the arts. Yeah, yeah, so they were super into mental illness and, like, trying to find, like, stuff for that. So maybe they dealt with a lot of, like, I don't Guilt know. Guilt or something? Mm, no, maybe, I don't know, maybe, because they, they do a lot of stuff in psychology. So maybe they that's, like, their thing. They dealt with some people in their family that had a bunch of mental Ill, mental health problems, and now they're, like, that's their... Because mm -hmm. do they do a lot of stuff with that? It sounds like they are kind of in, like, the mental health game a little bit. Um, yeah, I think so. But also like they're making it, they're making a ton of money. They're one family that's making a ton of money off this, uh, with how much money. Oh, yeah, I'm, not saying it's, I'm not saying they're right. I'm just, I feel like the and next, also, I'm curious what's what their funny motivations is like, are. 
to do what? For the philanthropy stuff? For everything. To separate themselves from all the evil that they're doing. Sure. You know? Because cause one thing I read was like, it's not called the Sackler pill. Like they're not, their name is not connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just this wealthy family. And when you ask how they got their money, they go, we don't talk about that. That's private. If you make a certain amount of money, you should have to talk about what you do to make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That should be a law. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I sell weapons to... <laughs> Yeah, you different should, countries. Yeah. If I walk into your house and you have a couch from West Elm, I want some answers. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what you, uh, yeah, what you spend on that. But um, so Richard Sackler is the is kind. He's kind of like the he's next. A he's the next yeah. generation of, yeah. Um, Mind of somebody who is going two hundred miles an hour with an appetite for micromanagement. They Ew. just describe him as a total douchebag. Ew. He also donates money to anti-Muslim groups. <gasps> yeah. And like two that the Southern Poverty Law Center has classified as a hate group. And when he was asked, he was like, oh, I don't donate to hate groups. But he doesn't seem to like Muslims very much. <laughs> Which that's, you know, teach their own. But former employees describe Richard as a man with unnerving intelligence, uh, alternatively detached and pouncing. Yeah. Ew. Yeah, he just sounds like a like a sociopath, psychopath. Yeah, and what's funny is like about like the older generation is like that generation probably they had to struggle a little bit, they had to figure it out, you know, they had to sort of fight a little. Sure. But this guy is just born into it and he's like this guy, this guy is the guy who's like I want to take this family to like the next level and I want everyone in America to be doing oxycotton. <laughs> Okay, when did he get involved? He got involved in probably the 90s, Okay, right? okay, so he had, so did he, was he successful? Was he a big reason why it spread? Um, yes, I believe so. You, we, we only read one article. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you also only you read, read one article? Wait, you you read same article. And I didn't my, even read all I, the article. You don't know? <laughs> you read the same article that I did. Um, mm. Yeah, tell me. Uh, no, we, I have the, the he donated to the hate group Southern Poverty Law Center by the Southern? No, they oh, No, they classified the three he, organizations. Okay. That he donated yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this guy sucks. Damn. Okay, so. He's so, big into Israel. Uh, oh, wait, are they Jewish? I think yeah they're yeah they're Clearly. Jewish Jewish immigrants. These guys seem rich they're Jewish enough. immigrants from the the original brothers are Jewish immigrants from from Flatbush. Right, right, right. Yeah. Huh. But I mean this theme kind of comes up on the show a lot and it's like you don't really you don't think about this stuff unless you understand like the big money of it, right? Right. Like, you and that's think, what like, I'm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't because there has to be because you know the anti-Muslim groups. I'm like, I wonder what that was related to. I wonder what their. Do you keep up with that shit? Do you keep up with foreign relations that much? Ish, but I can't say that I'm like right. you know qualified I think we're to talk similar. about it or anything. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. It's probably all connected in some ways. Like he does donate money to like Republican, you know, uh -huh. political yeah. people. Um, Herman Cain. He donated to Herman Cain. He donated to Strom Thurmond, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. So these are all guys who are going to kind of pass laws that is going to help with his agenda, his agenda sure. of getting the, uh, his agenda of getting all of Pennsylvania hooked on Oxycontin. Yeah. And, and and well, they scratched his back. <laughs> I wonder what they. Yeah, they got something out of it. Right. And you think, oh, it's just Pennsylvania. They're bad people. They're bad drivers. Well, they don't deserve to to die of overdoses. Mm. Mm. <laughs> they are pretty bad drivers, though. Are they? Somebody cuts you Everywhere's off. Everywhere's bad drivers. They, no, they every time was... somebody cuts me off, it's a Pennsylvania plate. Almost every really. Time. Yeah, they're pretty <laughs> bad. No, I'm. But okay, so you're just like proving his point, like as we speak. What? That they deserve to die. Uh, yeah, you're right. Hey, what did we learn today, everybody? <laughs> the Pennsylvanians deserve to die. And um, so does anybody who got hurt and got prescribed it for their injury. Yeah. Yeah. It does seem like, and like, I feel like with this episode, we are, we're, we're not experts. We're new to this stuff. We are just kind of connecting oh, yeah. the dots, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, apologies if this isn't like a whole, you know. We're not telling you the whole story here, but read the article. It's good. 
read the article. On, it, there's an article on Esquire about yeah. about the Sacklers. Um, yeah, bring yeah. a bring a snack. It's a long one. It's a long. Yeah, one. I'm bummed that I didn't get to. I, I you know he I know, sent me an article all... and I was like, damn, okay. I thought I'd need like 20 minutes to read this thing. It's like fucking huge. Yeah, we all didn't finish it. And I did a lot of research today, but you don't find the stuff that you really wanna, you yeah. know, talk about. Um, yeah, it's just crazy that there's just one family making all this money from like a legal way of selling these opioids to like senior citizens. Well, I just wonder how much money they're making and how much they're paying off to continue being in a position. But that's the thing. That's the thing. They are paying off so much money. What's their end game? Does it live forever? They they probably have high overhead of bribery. You know what I mean? It's like, how much money are they taking home? They They say 14 billion, but. Yeah. But when you think about it, when you have, when you have 14 billion, a million dollars is a fucking drop in the bucket. Drop. You know? And then, but thousand, then other people figure that out, and they want more and more and more. Right, but I'm saying like you can you can buy you can buy TV ads for a couple million. You can buy senator. You can buy politicians yeah. for probably a couple million, maybe a couple hundred thousand. I'm sure there's ways to hide. You can <laughs> buy Marco Rubio. You just take Marco Rubio to like a uh-huh. Chuck E. Cheese. You know, the way I, you just the way tell you're... Jeb he's cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the way you're saying it, it just makes me feel like if you ever had money, you just like offer money to senators to fuck you. <laughs> if you put like a million dollars down, and you're like, I bet you million dollars, you could have sex with me. Wait, I have to pay them to have sex with me? Yeah, yeah, you're just getting them to do it. That wouldn't happen. Just the way we were talking about it. You know it's the only re- way you, you know still be reputation? able to feel manly. You're you like, I'm paying so reputation? much money. Yeah, I have so much money, like yeah. a man. It's the classic. If if that if I, if I gave you a million dollars, you yeah. know, would you suck? You know, a man's dick. It's that. Yeah, and right. guy, yeah, who would you suck a dick for a million dollars? I mean, right now, but you know, if I had this pharmaceutical company, of course not. Would you suck pennies. a dick for a million dollars? Yeah, yeah. What am I stupid? <laughs> there are people who <laughs> of are course stupid. They would. Yeah. yeah, there's people who are like you know, homophobes, who are like, hell no. I'm well, some people will deny it, it, but it's like, come on, man, a million dollars. Yeah. If you have, if you already have seven hundred thousand dollars, you, have a joke you about know what? That, I would do it. it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure, 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 sure. <laughs> You had a joke about it? Was it good? You suck your dad's dick for a million dollars. Ooh. No. Yes, you wouldn't. It still depends on how much money you have already, you know? All right. Also, can you kill them afterwards? (laughs) Actually, here's the question. Is he about to die? (laughs) Wait, here's the question. On his deathbed. Can I murder him right afterwards? Here's the question. Of course. Does he know that it's me? (laughs) (laughs) Of course what? (laughs) Of course you would suck a dick for a million dollars, right? Like anybody would. But I think the the hard, the tough question is like, would you like embarrass yourself? And you you, you can't, no one can ever find out that you did this embarrassing thing for a million dollars. Like. Would you go into like a crowded? Yeah, movie but you just theater? gotta deb- you just gotta deb- uh, figure out what you're embarrassed about because it's like there are gonna be a lot of people who might shame you for sucking that dick, but there are a lot of be a lot of people who are like, yeah, I get it, that's a million dollars, and you yeah. find some new people. Yeah, they're not gonna shame no, you as you're driving you, by and you're new. Would you do something that could potentially ruin your rep? <laughs> would you ruin your reputation for a million dollars? I think uh, that's it depends more of the in question. what way, because there are things that I find embarrassing that mm. I that if some if it's something that I pers would you it would depends. you go to Chinatown in a one of those farmers hats and with your eyes taped back and interview <laughs> people and then you have to upload it to YouTube yeah yeah and then forever but forever you're known as the chi- the that sounds funny. Yeah, forever you're known as Ish. the girl yeah. who did money. the Chinese yeah, the, fir- the first well, here's what video I would do: that got a is I would I would votes. donate some amount uh, to this friend of mine who might be Asian, <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be like, I think this person's Asian. I gave them money. Are yeah. we cool? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Donated to um, Asia. Yeah. But listen, I guess the point I was trying to make earlier was that you know, like, okay, so a a billion. You hear the term billion all the time, right? People say billion. It doesn't really mean anything. Sure. But like a billion is a I mean, thousand. It means a, lot. a bi- Yeah, a billion a is a thousand millions. million. I have a friend who's worth a hundred million dollars. She's a good friend of mine. Very, very famous uh, movie star <laughs> that I hung, hang out with regularly. <laughs> but anyway, she's worth a hundred million dollars. Cool. But like, she's a fucking peasant compared to. Yeah, you she's know. one tenth of that. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. People get around more because when you get wealth, you get access to people with more wealth than you. Get you get access to people. You more get wealth it's it's you. you're yeah. unlocking new levels every single time. Like I know somebody who right. was like, and you never get to the highest level. 
no not high enough never not yeah. until you're de- you're dead mm-hmm. but i know so yeah i know somebody who like grew up in like a really re- real like in connecticut really really rich and was mm. like upper middle class but wasn't rich 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 yeah and they felt probably drove her crazy drove him crazy mm-hmm. yeah it's like jeff bezos probably wants to just go to the zoo and get beaten up by a gorilla because he's like <laughs> in the t- he probably can't handle <laughs> being the. R- I, i'm sure I, there's no way you could ha- you could yeah. handle being the richest man in the world and you keep your sanity no <laughs> no fucking way yeah you're allowed no, to swim with the dolphins you should be able to fight <laughs> he, jeff bezos no. is like please let these dolphins please somebody dominate me uh-huh. let these dolphins fuck my ass <laughs> just so i can feel there's like a whole like there's a whole like, economy underwater that we don't know about where dudes are getting just fucked by dolphins (laughs) they found out they had they were in the dom community they were getting yeah yeah, yeah. they were getting you know beat by women and then that got out and they're like well nobody will ever know yeah (laughs) but you've had but like a thousand dollars like if you're a billionaire right sure A a, a thousand so if you okay if you're a billionaire do you need so a calculator? You, yes, I do. <laughs> you you probably have a thousand dollars, right? Sure. So you have a thousand dollars. So a a million a million dollars to a billionaire is a dollar. Yeah. So a mil, so a dollar you give you give dollars away all the time. Mm-hmm. So a million dollars to a politician. Or to whatever, or for a TV ad or something. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, you're like, yeah, I want to get this number up. I'm about 14, I want to get to 17. And right. that's all you can probably think about. And you have all the power tools. You have every, you have a uh, Makita. <laughs> every iPhone. Yeah, you have every, you every, have every you have car. An, yeah. You must have power tools, but not be good at them. Because if you were good with them, well, not necessarily. I guess you can be good at it, not Maybe. enjoy it. You get the Trento and you go to Starbucks. There's literally nothing else you can buy. You're like, all I can do is get this number up yeah and that's all you can think about and you're like i'm gonna i'm gonna use these pennies that i have to to get more money it's a disease and these people because should be they killed. saw their friend's yacht and they were like <laughs> now i need a bigger yacht yeah. now i now i need yeah now i need are you two yachts or whatever or a jet i would not want to be i would not want to be rich it sounds like a nightmare what that's just a, i want to have more money than i do it's now a headline. for sure but yeah rich rich is it's a headline waiting to happen. Remember Betsy DeVos had her yacht untied and set adrift. What? <laughs> yeah, it's just like if you're so rich, like people could just go to any of your properties and just like uh, hit their vacation no, property. No, they can't. No, they can't. Yeah. I thought you were but saying no, they she can't. did it. But as no, like no, a, somebody did it to no, her no. to like fuck like, with her. But Matt, okay. but but no, they can't because all they had to do was call the cops. Some fucking pig who makes forty thousand right. dollars a oh, year. Yeah. And and I get it. Not, oh, Mrs. De- Mrs. DeVos, I found the kids who who untied your yacht. I I curb stomped them. <laughs> like you know, that's all you have to do. Yeah. Uh huh. Anyway. Yeah, everybody, because that's another thing, too. You think about these people who are, you know, they have rich parents and they never had to work for anything. But then, you know, they there are some people who have that come from money where they are so obligated to their family because of the money that they get to. You know what I mean? Like some people are so willing to you just said you hope that you deal with you know, parents who want you to do things that you want to do. Like some people will not even be themselves because they don't want to lose that money. They'd rather yeah. not be themselves and not have to work that much. Yeah. You're describing like themselves. reality TV. Yeah. People, like their the morals are tough. Ta- yeah. And, right. You're probably miserable, but, but then it's not also necessarily like, though. but, but <laughs> once you get, yeah, but once you get a certain amount of money, once you get like $20 million, right. Then you're like, Oh, Cool. I can have a house in Rome, and I can have an a, a, a apartment in Zurich, and I can have a house. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. when also on, as you get more money, you can buy more property. You can buy more property, but you also are around. You start sometimes people start thinking, well, I earned these. Well, see, I did it. Other people can do it, and then you have yeah. it, you start having less empathy for other people. Yeah, because right. you're around, and also sometimes you're around other rich people who came from dirt. Or whatever. So then you're like, oh, yes. You're like, sir, if I gave you this dollar, it wouldn't help you. Yeah. Yeah, Instead, I'm going to give you a book. It's called Entrepreneurship (laughs) for Dummies. No, I'm going to give you this bottle of Oxycontin. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 
is what they're going to do. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Do you think these people like know that they're doing it? Do you think they do you think there's any with with Richard uh, with Richard Sackler? Right. Do you think there's any like malicious intent there? Do you think he, I think it varies think he, from person to person? I have no fucking idea. Do you think I have he no thinks idea about these people? Evil other people are. Right. I have do you no think idea. He thinks about the people that he's killing the, the, the lives he's destroying the the, the mothers who have to bury I their fucking kids. I think that he kids. doesn't think about it because he's busy with uh, those samurai swords and <laughs> being cool and trying to get in, trying to put this on and put that on. Yeah. What rich people do is they keep themselves busy with philanthropy so that they don't have to feel bad about other stuff that they're doing. That's wrong. yeah. But I feel like I'm sure I'm sure they justify it in some way. Where yeah, I'm sure because like, they're doing other good stuff. They're like, yeah. sure, yeah, these people who are gonna die anyway because clearly they lack. You know what I mean? Like they can put. I'm this sure in their they head. never take an honest look at it, and they probably go, "Oh, well, you know, actually, the product that we have is good for people. It alleviates their pain, and people who get addicted are just irresponsible." Sure. You know? Yeah. But they're clearly using. I mean, the guy was like, "Don't worry about getting prescribed this." I mean, that's that just sounds so evil, doesn't so, it? Like a medication being like, "Don't worry." Um. Yeah. <laughs> No, absolutely it does. Up? I'm trying to find that other article that I sent. So, what's guys, their empire? This what's what's the Sackler Empire? Is it just a bunch of like the Cancer Center in Princeton and I Harvard? Mean, there's a ton of shit. It they made like. all they these made schools. Op- or? They got rich from making OxyContin. And yeah, and 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 uh, you know it, it was a it, the, the guy the guy Richard was like we're gonna take it to the next level and get everybody hooked and and actually what they would do is they they provided now they have so much money that they're able to provide kickbacks on every level and and. I don't know much about this. Okay. But they're able to provide kickbacks on every level of the chain of this of the I guess supply chain is the word. Kickbacks um, being like <laughs> extra money for all the people so, involved. Yeah. So they have sales reps. Um so what so I think what ends up happening is like they have they have these like hot sales reps who like mm-hmm. go to doc's offices, they give out free samples, they go, Hey, prescribe this to your patients. You know, yeah. then they have they they have doctors who um Well here's another thing too. We're to, we're demonizing these billionaires and the as sure, fine. But then also these fucking all these doctors who continue prescribing it after they see their patients falling apart from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they do is they they have they have these sales reps that go to the doctors. I think I think they buy them lunch. It's yeah. it's very of course. Listen, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. listen. Sales reps always yeah. You get yeah, them yeah. a new car. It's or something. very yeah. it's very and easy to buy people. People love feeling treated. Oh, it's so easy to buy people. I used to work in like the uh, uh, mechanical sales, so like control stuff, and like yeah, people would create friendships i mm-hmm. i remember before i even i wasn't even I mean, I was i'm giving just an, i'm giving you pasta i'm giving I was you an half intern. Eat, i'm yeah, giving yeah, you yeah. a half eaten tub work container of yes, pasta thank you i was an intern i wasn't even like the We're person who bid forever. stuff yet <laughs> yeah. and i was like 17 8 you know 20 whatever getting taken out to lunch because yeah. they think that i'm going to take that job that it chooses the people i'm being like mm-hmm. groomed before i'm even yeah money buys b- Oh, I have this cool vacation. Here are tickets to go see this game. I mean, yeah. it's just constant. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like in the past three years, Colin Jost has been so good to me, been so good to Deb. We went to his house in Montauk. Yeah. He takes like buys food, pays for stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm going to find out eventually that he's evil and that, you know, totally. like, nobody can have that And how are you going to handle it? I'm going to f- probably defend him. I'm probably going to go gotta, online yeah. and be the one guy who defends him. I'm, lo- I'm loyal. You got you know? Yeah, dude. But when I find out about, about all the evil shit that he's doing, it's going to be like, f- you know, on, it's going to be tough because he really was just a great... Right. Yeah. Great guy. Hopefully he's just exploiting children in a different country or something. Um, or no, hopefully, hopefully he's just yeah. exploiting adult women that people don't believe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, I feel like that's uh, the... Well, actually, you know what? Children... No, children are the go-to because the, they have the least voice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know we're sort of coming up on time here, but uh, I did I did send you guys an article... Okay. Another article, um, and it was here's it here's something that I found because we we just you know like I said we when we put the show together we pick a topic and we just start you know grabbing stuff off the internet but I sent you this eight startups fighting the opioid crisis from Inc dot com the business magazine I love this idea that like 
Okay, startups. the bad guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's who should be taking. That's them who on. should be taking them on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're just all I in mean, their like insane. fancy chairs that are scooped. How funny <laughs> would it be? Six hundred dollar chairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They just like. <laughs> There's ping pong tables around. They're like, how are we doing? How are we trying to take this on? Okay. Oh, wait, what are the? What's the name of the, the Sacklers? The Sacklers just the Sacklers. like go and act as if they're gonna like sponsor the startup. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they yeah. just get them addicted on they some other sat- drug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. just like they start giving them goodie bags with weed in it, and oh, they're that's like. Really funny. <laughs> yeah. They just make them not productive. They just like they just like sent they just put a, a dead hooker at their Christmas party. <laughs> yes, they, they send Tom Hagen over. He's like, no, this girl had no family. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're gonna infiltrate them too. So it's like, yeah, this idea that like and and also I don't I don't think I'm like a big government guy, but this fucking idea that like. Oh, okay. So the bad business people created this problem, and now there's some good business people right. who wear uh, who wear khakis and they wear sandals at their office, <laughs> so, uh-huh. yeah. and they have exposed brick and they have free <laughs> Captain Crunch for their employees. Yeah, yeah they're yeah, gonna yeah. fix this problem, <laughs> right? So hey. here's so here's one of the hey, things. Hey, startups sometimes I, their families are rich. You know what I mean? A lot of startups, it's rich families. Yeah. Or that are like, hey, we have No, the- of course. And they have so this access. So what we need is, yeah, this is exactly what we need is rich people. Well, here's the thing. We need rich people fighting rich people, not. Well, actually, it's the rich people's kids fighting each other. Now. Yeah. Another thing, too, is like if any of these people that we talk about decided to like have us killed, no one would really investigate. <laughs> Yeah, the fans you know. would be upset for no, they but they would they would just they would just find another podcast. Sure. Oh, for sure, they're fucking scum. Our fa- f- podcast fans <laughs> are it's bad fickle. people these who hosts, will not who will uh-huh. who will not investigate our deaths. <laughs> these hoes ain't loyal. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, they'll switch Actually, their like, subscription to something else. I feel like our fans would do the crazy like you know the the twine on the board and like the the photographs of they're all like, the suspects. Investigate <laughs> Matt Anderson. I think dead. my family. Yeah. I think. Do you think you'd be investigated pretty hard? Uh, do you think your family? Do you think nobody is? I don't know. Maybe that's naive of me, but I'm like, I think my, I think my dad and like some of my family would be like taken, getting to the fucking Bl- bottom of that shit, Liam Neeson style. But my mom, might, I don't but know. They would probably kill maybe her I too. Should, maybe I should start have calling you- them more so there are people to investigate my right. death. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, rich, yeah. rich people have people killed all the time, right? Have you ever heard of a situation where a rich person? Uh, had it's not killed? a rich I guess people we thing. Could <laughs> rich people and very poor people get people killed. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, or maybe they're not as powerful as we think they are. But but anyway, so here's all right. So here's no, that's exactly what you say. People get richer and richer and richer. Keep going. What? Yeah. Yeah. What are these startups? Here's the startups that are going to save the world. Number one is an app called Trigger. T-R-I-G-G-R. Trigger makes an app that monitors phone use to determine when someone recovering from addiction is at, is most at risk. For instance, it'll notice an atypical flurry of texts in the middle of the night and, without reading those messages, sends a check-in message to ensure that the texter is okay. So if you send, like, four texts in a row, they're going to be like, don't don't do heroin. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. That's like their solution to this. Now, it was founded by John Haskell, Bong Call. Big brother. Bong Call and Brian Lott, which is like, okay, fine. Give me your phone. Like, that's the app. Is they just take everybody's phone. Yeah, they just become your father. That <laughs> yeah. helps. Give me the phone, Michael. <laughs> but this is like insane. And the funding, what do you I think don't the know, funding maybe there, it has? Maybe there are some like crazy studies that showed... I don't know. They raised four point two million for this thing. There's a lot of people who have family who died of opioid rich families. Crisis. Rich families, dude. Really? You think That's those what's people? Nice. What's what, you know? What's nice about rich people that is, is what's shit nice happens about it. to them. Yeah, go ahead. It is. You're like, yeah. We were saying this earlier. It's like I hope that this rich person deals with a problem that affects me, right? And that they feel like they've got to give back to that community. Mm-hmm. I hope that this rich person's uncle has leukemia so that my family member with, le- you know what I mean? Yeah. But that, but with other. It's like autism. Like maybe there will be a cure for autism someday. Cause you know, oh, there will be people. because yeah. Yeah, 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 they've yeah. got it. it. They're just holding out. Yeah. Um, no, no. I think people with autism are going to actually take over the world. I think I, I read somewhere that more and more people are being born like on the spectrum. And I think eventually uh, they're, 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 ro- it, it's, <laughs> It's robots taking people talk about AI and like robots <laughs> taking over and it's like no they're already here and they keep yeah. there's just more and, and more and they're looking at the ground they won't look every at every day <laughs> I mean, yeah 
and they already have the number one <laughs> podcast on Patreon. <laughs> 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 what are these other startups? Let's get through this. Yeah. Um, it's good. Chronotherapeutics. <laughs> they're finding a patch that that helps. It's like a nicotine addiction. Uh-huh. Anyway, I just think SRI therapeutics. This is like... No, there's another thing that's like, it's a group therapy thing. So for $65 a week, it offers group therapy in areas plagued by opioid addiction. These people don't fucking have $65 a week. Yeah. Wait, they don't have. S- the, the, oh, it's for $65 a week. And it's a, for, yeah. it's a for-profit thing. And, and there's like so the idea support that like, groups that like meet in church basements, you know, and they like barely keep the lights on where wait, it's like free. Is it $65 free. a week per person or $65 a week to throw a whole seminar for no, a group No, I think it's people? per person. It's per person. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, it's it's a it's a special it's a special company that provides group therapy oh, if you're special. addicted to heroin. That's a bunch of rich people are like sixty five dollars is nothing, right? It's nothing. That's it's absolutely yeah. nothing. Can I could write that, that off. It's like the taxes. guidance. It's like the guidance counselor from Beavis and Butthead. He's like, don't do heroin. <laughs> <laughs> Got a guitar. Um, I was anyway. thinking about the other day. Like, I think that you know, like therapy and all this shit. All these rich people who have money for therapy should. Instead, because all these sometimes anxiety and depression is just your brain telling you you should feel bad for for not giving back to society enough. Yeah, I think that's part point. of it. And I think that all these rich people who want therapy people. should instead have to listen to a poor person complain. And that should be their point. therapy every week. And then maybe they'll fucking realize that they don't have it that fucking and hard. You know what, Abby? You might be just the poor person to do. You that. know what? I think that I think, you know, maybe I should get into politics and run for office. I have some pretty good platforms. Yeah. I swear to God, you're the most retarded person. No, you're I know. the most retarded person. Oh, All they're right. so retarded, you guys. <laughs> they're both they're calling we're each other retarded, retarded but they're together. both retarded. Yeah. I just watched them both have to figure something out. Yeah. But All we right. did it. So let's let's wrap up this episode. We should probably revisit this. I know I say that about every show. Hey, well we'll um, be I'll be around tomorrow. Yeah, I'm doing your podcast tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Check out book slots, everybody. Yeah, That's pick it up. show. Um, now this is, maybe we'll continue the conversation on there. Now this is, okay, we'll close off. We'll, we'll close off. We'll close the episode with this. <laughs> this is Donald Trump's statement on the opioid problem. And I think this is really interesting because I feel like if you asked Hillary Clinton, like, what do you think about all these people dying from opioids? She'd be like, well, who fucking cares? Like, in her, like that's what she would say privately. Yeah. Sure. She'd Are they like, voters? She'd be like, ah, is it a swing state? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Like, Hillary Clinton doesn't give a shit about people dying of, dying from overdoses. But, like, I don't know. There's something, um, there's something about this statement that Trump is giving, you can kind of feel like some compassion from him. Okay. Maybe it's a strategic thing because I'm sure uh, a lot of his voters, uh huh. I'm sure a lot of, I'm sure they've, Coal they've miners, I'm sure, I'm sure they've ran some analytics factory where they're workers. like, listen, Mr. Trump, a lot of your base has cousins <laughs> who died of a pill, of a Was this recent that he overdose. came out with this? Uh, this is. I wonder how long he's had to have an acting coach to act like he. <laughs> but it's really but it's really funny Abby because like well he'll, maybe I'll he, see it and I'll think like, differently Let's it like makes sense but then he'll just go like way too far he'll be like it's a very bad problem we're gonna take the people who are responsible we're gonna hold them responsible and uh, we should also uh, shoot the drug dealers in the town square yeah. like he just goes way too far but, but he would, he would respect something- that businessman though that's what's like two faced about it is like if you met that rich man who started that company he'd be like here's the thing I'm so proud of you Trump tried to show the opioid dude, his car, and he wasn't impressed. And now he's going after him. This is some respect Ooh. shit. Because Trump is like loyal. You know what I mean? Like Trump is all about loyalty. It's like who's pissed who's pissed him off? Who's been there for him the whole time? It's like maybe he's tried to work with these people and they fucked him over. Maybe they have some weird thing going back. There's but maybe this is me being naive, but I just feel like he does Maybe like, he's a good guy. Yeah, no, but no, but I feel like he does give a shit here. And I remember one time I was I was doing a casino gig in upstate New York and I Trump was on TV and I said something about Trump and the and the middle-aged lady she had a fucking mullet behind the counter and she was uh. like, "You know, yeah, I know he talks 
I know that's not an upstate New York accent. Sure, but just keep going. I know he talks a lot of bullshit, but I think he does want what's best for us. And there's something about it where, like, the way he talks, he's like, we're going to handle this. We're going to fix this. We're going to hold people responsible. It's a, There's a direct sort of language to it that he's he's kind of, like, cracked that code about how people talk. It's funny because he does have kind of like a God syndrome thing where he's like, I want everyone to like me. Yeah. And people who do will get heaven, which is, you know, their their daughter who died from an opioid overdose revenge or whatever. Yeah. And there's a ton of people who, here who are like, and I feel like even if you, I feel, I don't know, part of me kind of feels like even if you don't like Donald Trump, um, if you had a kid who died of an opioid overdose you would put some trust in into him from this it feels kind of genuine maybe okay, somebody well, convinced let's him see. let's just take a look okay, thank you very much i'd also like to ask you to bring a major lawsuit against the drug companies on opioids some states have done it but i'd like a lawsuit to be brought against uh, these companies that are uh, really sending opioids at a level that uh, it shouldn't be happening. Uh, so highly addictive. People go into a hospital with a broken arm. They come out there a drug addict. They get the arm fixed, but they're now a drug addict. And I'd like us to look at some of the litigation that's already been started with companies. Uh, rather than just joining them, I'd like to bring a federal lawsuit against those companies. I'd also like to have you take a look at the fentanyl that's coming out of China and Mexico. And whatever you can do from a legal standpoint. And then, and then, like, here's where he just starts to completely go off the rails. Because he's like, China's doing it, and so is Mexico. <laughs> Which is probably made up. But that first part, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm being naive, but it felt, a li- it felt like, kind of genuine. Maybe maybe he's on the spectrum, and this is one of his One of his things. things. Yeah, the broken Litigation clock, right? lawsuits for people and companies. But in China, you have some pretty big companies sending that garbage and killing our people. It's almost a form of warfare. And I'd like to do what I need to do legally to stop it from China and from Mexico. <laughs> it, like, gets insane. And, uh, oh. so if you do that, I'd appreciate it. God. Please, with what we're able to come up with working with our communities. Could you say something? Thank you very much. And as you know, uh, the pharmaceutical industry is said for many years to have the most powerful lobby. The good news is I don't need their money, so we're doing the right thing. And frankly, I think the drug companies actually, in the long run... The other I- thing about his cabinet, too, is imagine you're just like a fucking loser your whole life, like a low-level like government or like a journalist or whatever. Uh-huh. No one respects you, and then he's like, I got a job for you. And you're like, really? I get yeah, to work I- in the White House? Like, that's his yeah. whole, yeah. you know? It's like the replacements when they all got to play for a <laughs> professional <loved> team. <laughs> what, what movie is that again? It's Who's Keanu that? Reeves it? and it gets to go play Who's- for the football team. Yeah. Johnny Falco, I think his name was. Yeah, who's the kicker? Uh, yeah. The kicker was that uh, Irish guy who smoked cigarettes. I don't remember. Uh, yeah. It's like yeah. ma- Major League is like. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Have a good, I don't have a good reference for me. I'm like, I remember enjoying it. Yeah. So like the plot is like, uh, you know, there's like holdouts and like this replacement team gets to play against other replacement teams. And then like eventually they play against a real team and they win, I think. I don't know. But it's just like a regular season game, I think. I guess the thing, too, is like when he goes to these rallies, I'm sure he talks to at least 20 people every rally who's like, my son died of an well, overdose, just my has- sister died oh, yeah. of an overdose, she, you know. So so that that is kind of like um, his base. Sure. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's really probably dealt with some stuff I think personally. Benefit and- also. Yeah. But the middleman is not going to be benefiting. Somebody and some very rich people out there that do nothing, make a lot of money. Very rich people. In uh, China. I don't know who they you are. I don't want to know who they are. But they don't like me too much right now. You know, it, it, somebody, I think it was Karen said something about It's like, and I don't know if she heard it, but just like in New York, it's not about, people don't judge too much. People judge about money. People mm. are judgmental about money, but it's also about who's doing shit and who's getting shit done. And that's a very New York attitude to have. He was like, there's a bunch of billionaires out there who aren't doing anything. Mm. You know what I mean? He like made them sound lazy. It's like, he yeah. doesn't respect, he doesn't respect that they're not in the race too. Mm-hmm. that they're cause like, you know, with his money, he's like, yeah, I'm constantly building shit though. Yeah. You know what I mean? He has this like thing where he's like, he's constantly trying to create things. So he sees that laziness. And I wonder if he fucking hates that. Mm. Anyway, would say, wouldn't you say, 
Well, so, a lot of, uh, a lot of working class people this probably is hate inter- that too. Totally. You know, because they're the ones who have to bust their Yeah, because they see Trump and they're like, they've he's seen, right, he's yeah. been around so much that he's clearly been doing something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's yeah. always doing something. He's yeah. not fucking sitting around. I mean, he is playing golf quite often. Right. But what he what is he doing while he's How playing golf? It? He's fucking making business deals. Yeah. That's what golf is, is it's fucking business deals. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought I was going to have to learn how to play golf when I worked at that one place. I was like, fuck. Yeah, how is a rich real estate guy so relatable to, like, working class people? Because, because you know why he is? It's the directness, maybe? No, it's what like- it is, is, and coming from, so, like, my family had, like, a, a restaurant, you know what I mean? And it's fucking- Your step in- family had a mm-hmm. restaurant. Step family, yeah. sure, but- There ain't your real family. <laughs> Mike. <laughs> yeah. Do you hear that? You're not my real family. Um, <laughs> I do make fun of it- Italian stuff. It's really funny, but they're my family. That uh, some just are. They're interesting, but they all cook well. Anyway, whatever. Fucking. Anyway, the restaurant business is so up and down, yeah. and everything is like you put your heart and soul into something. Like you're yeah, creating yeah. a business, and they see his passion for businesses. Mm-hmm. You because like. He has big ups and he has big downs, but he like continues moving forward and trying to do shit. And I think business, especially small business people appreciate that because that's what fucking small business is. Mm. You're fucking, you're just at the, you know, mercy of whatever's going on. The fucking, oh, there's construction near where your restaurant is. Well, that might fuck up your business a whole new level. So it's like his respect for businesses because, you know, people look at people you know what I mean? But these people become their businesses. Mm-hmm. And so because they have so much respect for businesses that they're also respecting the people who put their livelihoods into their businesses. Mm. Anyway, that's yeah. so. And mm-hmm. but they're big tr- like my stepdad, you know, they're Trump pe- people. Yeah. They're people who are getting by one. And you know what? They're the kind of people who also play lottery tickets like he's fucking taking risks and stuff. And they're the kind of people who are like, if they had money, they'd be, you know, and anyway, whatever. Right. In terms of uh, prescription drugs and drugs, uh, nothing like this has ever happened before in our country. And I will say that the Democrats heard about it. They're very happy about it. I don't know. You just kind of get the feeling that he sort of knows about it and he cares. But they can't believe what's happening. So uh, because they want to see that, too. They want to see drug prices come down. And uh, nobody's ever seen where they raise the prices 10 percent. And the following day, they announced that they were just kidding. But that's what happened. What? So uh, thank you very much, Secretary. Fantastic. Wait, well, what did he say well, about Democrats? Pharma, did he say the Democrats? Pharmaceutical prices, I think, are just all over the place. They oh, can kind of yeah. charge whatever they want. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, there's a lot. It's a bad business, folks. Well, we, bad, bad business. And there's new articles that have come out since this, you know? Like, I'm reading just like, you know, May, like this is from May, like the headlines May, Rudy Giuliani won deal for Oxycontin Maker to continue sales of drug behind opioids. Um, this one's from September 7th, Oxycontin billionaire patents, new drug for opioid treatment. Well, so he's like making money, like helping these, people get off the drug. He was oh, pushing. the same guy. Yeah. I mean, it says an executive oh, at a Purdue oh. Pharma, Richard Sackler made billions convention in America. Well, like, that's, like, that's what, that's what shows me happening <laughs> is like, I mean, if they really want to like crack down, it's like, then have, take some of that money. And put it into recovery centers for people. You know what I mean? That's yeah, where but the that, but those these people will, will never be held responsible. Sure. Yeah, that's what happens. And they'll be like, "Oh no, I'll, we're, we're curing yeah. it now." So we're we're actually yeah yeah we're curing it. I heard it's actually a, going back to Sam Harris, he was talking to David Frum one time, and he was like, "David Frum was like, the pharmaceutical companies are curing cancer," which sort of like sort of alluding to the fact that like we should. Well, here's Be supportive the thing. of har- pharmaceutical companies because uh, they, oh, they cure cancer, so we just let them do whatever they want. It says here, well, let them charge whatever they want. Let them let them let people die well, and let them. Research is really expensive. Like figuring out new medications and testing and everything, it's such a. It's such a fucking expensive. There's so many hoops you have to jump through. You have to get things approved. You have to be doing tests on people. You got to be doing all the insurance. Everything that comes along with all this stuff. That's why they kind of get away with taking all that money is because they're like, well, we're going to turn it around and we have to use that. Mm. We ha- we need a fuck ton you of sound, money. You sound like kind of a Republican right now. No, not necessarily. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I am, but 
but that's the same like with Elon Musk. Like he yeah. to to do these huge projects, you need you're gonna make mistakes sometimes, and you need that much money to be able to make mistakes because every once in a while something crazy good happens. Right. There's mm-hmm. a lot of fucking shit that goes into that, and that's why they get away with keeping all that money. Because yeah. I'm mm-hmm. wondering, like I I'm curious, like worth 14 billion. I'm like I want to know how much. What what are their days like? What are the, where's all the money going? I don't know. Yeah. So they anyway, they could Chinese be good guys. Artifacts. I just think that they could be good dudes. Well, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's our conclusion. <laughs> Folks, wait, wait, wait. Let me clarify. It's actually hard to be a pharmacy billionaire, and uh, <laughs> they're decent people. Wouldn't yeah. that be funny if that was the takeaway? I think we should leave the episode at that. <laughs> yeah, I think what we should all th- realize is that they, yeah, they need more empathy. You know mm. what I mean? Maybe yeah. if we just, cause that's, I, I do think about this where we do resent rich people for wanting, um, you, you know, credit every, but for you doing think, good you things. You think everybody's trying to do the right thing? No, of course not. I think there's bad people and there's, and there, but there are a lot of people who are tr- trying to do the right thing, but their, their idea of what's right is so warped based on their own experiences and what, yeah. But, um, you know, people resent rich people for wanting credit for like doing good things, but it's like, f- just tell them good job. We need to tell rich people good job more and start like letting them hang out or whatever. So they'll just start giving more of their money. We should have Rod Stewart do free concerts at their house so they feel cool. <laughs> yes. So they stop fucking. Up. We should like Beyonce should do That's volunteer the first work. Step, yeah. And she should be performing at Steve Schwartzman's Christmas party. Nah, so, fuck that, that. so that he's like, I'm cool. What, you perform here for free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm cool. And then he'll Dan stop. Dan Ninen can go perform for them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For my 15 year old's <laughs> birthday party, I'm going to get Dan Ninen in the headline. <laughs> I, somebody, somebody in the in the Cumbtown uh, fan group, they asked like what race Amber is, and <laughs> and then somebody goes, well, let's just say she gets her sushi from Seven <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> what does that mean? Dan, I laugh. That's Dan Ninen's joke. He goes, I'm oh, half okay. Jew, I'm half uh, Japanese <laughs> and half Indian, so I get my sushi from Seven oh, Eleven. Okay. Yeah, and we have nothing negative to say about Dan Ninen. He's a Great guy, great comic. Oh, I don't yeah. know. And yeah, I don't, I don't know. want him emailing me. Oh, is that a thing? He starts getting mad at emailing people? Yeah. Oh. But if you're mad at us, go ahead and email us at sitdownpod at gmail.com. Yeah, why don't we let the guest uh, plug her stuff first? Yeah, of course. Uh, Book Sets Podcast, uh, abbyrosenquist.com. How, how is that chair? Oh, uh, I'll plug the chair. It is a cougar chair. Uh, and it's, it's good. I it's mean, it's still comfortable. Yeah, it's comfortable. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I think it's great. Yeah. Thanks. Do you need, um, do you need me to compliment it more to feel better about it? I think that it's really nice. No, I, I, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing, it doesn't have the tilt back is the only thing. Yeah. But I then you kind of get to adjust slouch. It. You can adjust it. You could but definitely I think adjust a, I think tilt a, back a, t- a tilt back's a very important part of an you office chair. You probably just don't know how to do, use it yet or whatever. It looks like it has more levers and stuff. No, it doesn't. All right. All right. Sit on it. All right. I'll try you, it out. Uh, yeah, let me know. All right. Oh, so, no, um, man stuff. Also, we want to send a <laughs> we want to send a shout out, a big thank you to our Patreon subscribers. We're up to almost a thousand dollars on Patreon, which is nice. uh, pretty mm-hmm. cool. You know, it means a lot, you guys. When I'm when I'm uh, moving furniture into a fourth floor walk up and my back hurts, you know, I'm like, at least I have that money coming in. It feels like, I mean, you know, it it, it feels really good to have your people. Listen to what you're doing and support you. And uh, if you don't support the show, and you can, if you can spare a few bucks, that would help us out a lot. Um, but if not, you can rate us five do. stars on iTunes. You can rate us five stars on iTunes. That that helps a lot. Um, also, if you don't want to be like a monthly, you know, member, it's very easy to cancel your Patreon subscription. People cancel all the time. Totally. People just want to mm-hmm. be, you know, one or two month. Come and go. And, uh, as you come please. and go, and it, you can come and go as you please, and it, it, every every little bit helps yeah, out. Yeah, us. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you. And we don't sign have ads. Up, come, you know, we sign up ads. every we few just, months, go back, yeah. listen to all the episodes, get oh, off yeah. of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Binge them for a little bit. Man. And then that way you can pay for less months. You're proud right. of us not having ads, huh? 
Would you be no, against us having ads? ads? I just no one wants to advertise on gotcha. the show. Gotcha. I mean, yeah, okay, uh, uh, yeah. Here's an ad for a uh, Yankel <laughs> School Bus Company. <laughs> we we have the most professional drivers, <laughs> and we don't cut off Mike in traffic <laughs> with our entire school Yankles. bus. I'm still mad Sign about me that. Up. I'm still mad. You at got that cut off by a school bus. A Hasidic school bus. <gasps> I'm How still did you upset know about it? Because uh, I looked at him. Uh, no, I meant like because you couldn't uh-huh. read the the Jewish yeah. writing on the side of the school bus. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so. And they look like ca- that drawing I drew of that one guy earlier. <laughs> yeah, right. Larry <laughs> Silverstein. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's a big bus. <laughs> <laughs> if, you can't, if you can't support the show financially, you can always email us. And you can rate us five stars on iTunes. That helps us out. We got 200 ratings. That's a pretty good look, I think. And um, and then uh, also you can help spread the word. You can tell your friends. You can post about uh, my girlfriend's breasts on Reddit. You know, keep us in yeah. the... Hell yeah. Yeah, and shout out to Dumpling. The he, uh, he's the one that gave me that article. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, you didn't even find the article yourself? Well, I, I had a person who was watching my you really Fortnite s- live stream. You really serve no purpose. What are you talking about? You wouldn't have gotten it otherwise. You don't talk. Yeah, you, you don't talk to the these fans <laughs> yes, I like do. I do. I'm yes, like do. down in the yeah, down in the, the trenches, the hanging people. out. That's true. You know. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, Dumpling Boys. Ooh, I want all right. Some I want some of that pasta. Let's get the fuck out of here. All right, so yeah, let's eat some pasta. pasta and get out of here. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. Uh.